I can abjectly promise people you're going to be blown away. I promise you you're going to be blown away. I don't think so, but okay. <laughs> the humility. Mom piece, number three, chapters 101 to 114. Full disclosure, um, I, I read to 118 or 116 by accident. Yeah, you uh, you called me like yesterday to be like, hey, what chapter was I stopping at? And I was like, 114. And you went, oh, and I was like, are you on the next arc? And you, you just said, uh, we might be at a, a small garden. <laughs> In my defense. Yeah? I wanted to read it. <laughs> In your defense, you wanted to? We are going to be talking about uh, today Reverse Mountain and Whiskey Peak. Here's the thing. I didn't expect there to be much to talk about in this section, unfortunately. My biggest goal is that every part of the series gets its dues, so I'm specifically cutting parts that I think might get overlooked to sit on their own so that we can give them the time I think they deserve. But I think I'm going to be wrong. I think you've already found a lot to talk about here. Yeah, Reverse Mountain. Let's talk about it. Why are we sailing up a mountain? I don't know. <laughs> We're sailing up a mountain. But it's interesting because I kept thinking about the myths and legends around Koi having to to get over top of the waterfall in order to become a dragon so it's kind of like an origin story of how you go from being a regular whatever you are into a greater version of you into the dragon i hadn't thought about that but it's kind of fun because the grand lines where all the major players in the world are it's how you become a great pirate is by entering the grand line this person did talk here and i wanted to mention that first like combat was such a short period of time and i felt like a little dare I say, ripped off because <laughs> when we were in the com belt and there was that amazing nest of creatures. I kept thinking like, oh, oh, oh yeah. Now that this is something we're getting somewhere. And suddenly we're on like the nose of this huge ass creature. And I was like, oh, this is going to be, and then he sneezes them off. <laughs> and I mean, fortunate for, for our group of merry wanderers, obviously but i was like dude you just got sneezed off back i wanted a little more com belt time i feel like the com belt is mostly there just so that you have a good explanation for why you need a way to enter the grand line and why it yeah. matters as a location but what i love is it's not absolute it's not like oh yeah yeah you can't cross over the com belt at all because oda doesn't build a world lazily he understands that people live in the world and will break what seems like rules because they live there. Clearly, Don Krieg just rode as hard as he could out of the com belt to escape Mihawk. Otherwise, how did he make it back? I am hoping, just as a fan, I just said that just as a fan out loud. So I guess that officially makes me a fan. Congra so You've entered the fandom. You're part of the One Piece fandom. Congratulations. Have you reached the point where you're a drug pusher needing to make everyone read it yet? No, and I'm really nervous about that because you were so pushy. Everyone like, is. You can't not be. This series turns you into a pusher. It's really, really worrying <laughs> because I'm like, oh, oh my God, no, I just lied. I absolutely <gasps> have tried to push you. You've already done it. Oh, That's shit, how you know you're a real fan. Oh my God, I just remembered. <laughs> Yeah, no, I told one of my friends when I was telling her what I was doing, I said to her, like, it's it's not something that you're going to be able to get into within the first few chapters. It's not in a way that you've ever read a book, blah, blah, blah. And I went on and then I was like, but you need to get in to understand how much layering and detailing he's doing and that it's a mystery and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and she was like, it sounds really cool. I just don't know if I could get into it. And I was like, anyone could. And then I was like, never mind. So, yeah, no, I forgot. I, I did have about a five minute monologue of why she should read. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that you're properly joining the fandom. So then we come sliding down the mountain and you're like, they hit another thing that you think is a mountain at first. And it turns out to be this giant wheel, which I was grateful for because in the first piece, then it ended with somebody screaming, Laboon! And I was like, what's a Laboon? And you were like, don't you worry about Laboon. And then we met him right away. Yeah. And I was like, and, and, you know, as soon as you put a wicked animal in something, I'm all over that and want to give it a big hug. So <laughs> yeah. Choo Choo was immediately one of your favorite parts in early one piece. And I, Laboon, I still, still want to rescue that ways. damn dog. I want to take the, I want to take the cowfish Laboon and that dog with me and <laughs> live a great good life together. It was interesting because the whale is used in so many pieces of literature as a way of talking about how normal people turn into heroes. And I feel like Oda was saying like he really wanted to make sure that he 
he pressed the point that we're at a turning point for our cast of characters because oh. being swallowed by a whale is a symbol of crossing over a threshold and that when you escape the belly of the whale that it's changed you so your previous life doesn't exist anymore you're no longer an everyday person you're reborn as a hero i read something where somebody said between huh. a known and an unknown world and i thought oh my Whoa. god the transition thought, between the East Blue and uh, exactly and the Grand Line, that's perfect. I tried to find the name of this person because I hate not giving references when you find things. But this person who was looking at uh, the whale metaphor for something else was mm -hmm. saying that it's this really cool way of having a final split of your characters between what was known and what is now unknown. And then he called it the beginning of the Enlightenment. I need people to, oh God, I don't want to harass someone. So I don't know if I should say this. Don't, don't push this. At some point, I'm sure she will. I feel like Murph Napier, my favorite person who's done a read through would love your observations because she's been doing a series where she talks about literary analysis with One Piece and inspirational works. And you're bringing that up the whole way through in these cool ways. I really like that. I debated last time if I wanted to leave this in. Bellamy. So that people know if they come to chat, they get to feed my nice little dog. And you got pets too. Mwah. Uh, okay, now you gotta go because I gotta get back to work. <laughs> so anyways, we go in there. He makes this transformation. And now we've been told literally in two complete ways by Oda at this point that mm -hmm. they've made a switch from who they were and what they were before. And I completely agree with what somebody said and what you said e earlier. Once you see this moment happen, uh, yeah, prologue. The The other part was all prologue. Delicious mm. prologue, but prologue. Yeah. And now you know you're going into the meat of the story. This really feels like the same characters are in a different story now. Like everything until now was us just knowing who they are, what they're capable of, what they're willing to do. Oh, and something else that I loved is, uh, what's the name of the dude? Crocus. Oda names him Crocus, and a Crocus also symbolizes rebirth and new beginnings. So uh, oh. Oda was like, would you mind if I if I smack this in your face enough times that eventually you'll freaking get it? How many of the stories when people enter a whale, uh, they're eaten by it? Is there a pharmacy inside? <laughs> yeah, no, almost never. <laughs> Log pose. Pose means a gazillion different things. Pose a question, pose harm, sit around and pose. But pose generally takes time, no matter what. And then to log something, to put it inside and to write it down or make a permanent remembrance of it. So I like the idea of him calling it a log pose, thinking it of as this moment that you have to stand still in the moment that you can't just breeze through. It was a really good idea because otherwise your characters would come to a place they didn't like and be like, ooh, no, this is bad. Let's go. And by creating this idea that Everything is going in different directions. You're not going to be able to find your way out unless you have a log pose. And sometimes it may take many days and sometimes it may take an hour before it can record the specific magnetism for the area. It was a genius way of making sure that your people can't just go whooshing through things that they didn't enjoy. They, they're actually forced to wreck. Well, they have that. And then they have the fact that Luffy is stupid and wants to adventure in things that he shouldn't enjoy. So the, both of those things. Kaido Luminous has a question and wants to know what you think of Laboon's backstory. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So uh, is the word heart wrenching big enough for Laboon's backstory? I don't think so. <laughs> um, soul crushing? No, that's not quite big enough either. Uh, yep. Absolutely decimating and destroying. <laughs> Like that Laboon's being... friends didn't want him to come with him because it was too dangerous for a baby and they're probably all dead and he's been waiting for like 50 years. Are they all dead? I started to wonder and I can't, I'm not allowed. Am I allowed to make predictions throughout or are we just going to do them at the end? We have to return to them when we get to the end, but you can absolutely make predictions throughout. And remember, yeah. nobody talk about the predictions. The most we can say is interesting or we can't tell you. Those are the rules, but you are welcome to make a prediction. Okay, so first of all, Laboon's backstory, um, the very first time I read it, I read it the way that I look at things if I'm trying to look something up on the internet or look at comments. I partially read it the first time because it hurt my, it hurt my heart too much. And then I had to go <laughs> back and reread it when my heart knew where we were going because I was like, oh. Oh, my, oh my God, I am so sad right now. And the way that he drew tiny Laboon, even though he wasn't tiny, tiny, ugh. 
And then the way that Laboon continues to wait with that same idea of his family, his potter, his treasure, and how he just comes back to that sitting there and waiting for his treasure return. And he doesn't he even have the ability to go after his treasure. He has to wait for his treasure. It was heartbreaking because Laboon can't even be the master of his own destination. The same way that my baby dog couldn't be the master of his own destiny because both of them were waiting for treasure that probably would never return. Then I asked myself, is it possible that Buggy the stupid ass clown is Laboon's um, pirate crew? Because I... Buggy says in it, going back to the grand line, he said, I think I, I'm going to go look in my photos. I'm going to go look in my photos I, right I will, now. I will tell you, it can't be Buggy because you know that Buggy was a kid at the same time as Shanks. So he's not. Well, that's what I reminded myself. Yeah. But then I was like, okay, who else has gone through and would have the thing? And I was like, well, it could be the last Pirate King was deaded. Then he wouldn't come back for Laboon because his crew would have been split up. And then I was like, okay, who else? And then I was like, could it be Crap Geezer? Because Crap Geezer is older. He went into that area with his crew. Then they left and... And it feels like Crap Geezer would be the type of person who would have a baby laboon but as a pet. Like a person that wouldn't come back for a baby laboon. No, he doesn't. But would he be able to go back as well, right? I spent some time in my backstory world with laboon. And I just want to let you know that I was already super angry with you for making me like One Piece and have to read the soul-crushing backstory of laboon, my soft, big, beautiful whale. Don't worry, uh, it gets worse. Who? What? No! What? No! I mean the series in general, not Laboon. Oh, frick. God, you're killing me, man. The way that they dealt with Laboon not hurting himself anymore. I love how Luffy gets an idea, like, I don't know, stabbing himself in the face. And then is just like, I'm just going to do that thing. So he immediately goes <laughs> and attacks Laboon. And is like, if I attack Laboon, I can create myself as an enemy and give him purpose. Because right now, and I, and I really liked... I mean, did I love how Luffy did it? No, no, I didn't. But did I love that Luffy gave Laboon agency over his own life? Yeah, I did. He said, I'm now your nemesis and I'm coming back. You can't smash yourself in the face anymore because I've tattooed the front of you. So if you smash your face, you break our contract. You know what, Luffy? I'm here for that. W was it great hurting Laboon? No, I don't love that. But is it great that you cared so much uh, about Laboon that you found a way to make sure he didn't smash his little face in? Yeah, I'm here for that. Why are some of the people uh -huh. named numbers and some of the people named days of the week? In the organization Baroque Works, and you've met enough of them that I feel like I can say this, each agent is a male-female pair. The men are named numbers that organize their strength so that you can track the strength of a pair based off of what number they are. So the lower the number... The closer you are to zero, the higher in strength you and the closer you are. Exactly. To and the woman paired with each male agent is named after a day. Sometimes a day of the week, sometimes a holiday. I was yeah. going to say, you run out of days of the week really fast. Then he's giving them the thing and teaching them how to use their log pose. And then I was like looking at the little map that he did. Let me look at it right now. Mm -hmm. I was looking at his little map that he had. So I'm looking at this page and it's got the red line running through um, the side and then straight up and down. It has all these different navigable paths of different islands. And then they all come down to an island at the end. And it's written as Raftel. And because mm. everybody is on my ass about how I pronounced Zoro's name as Zolo, but I was saying, as far as I had known, that in Jap Japanese, you never pronounce the R as an R, but as an L. Yeah. Then I was like, is this supposed to be Laftel? But I think it's supposed to be Laftel, Laf. I don't know how to pronounce the last part. The p first part definitely has to be Laf. The last part is, I think I'm pronouncing incorrectly because. So if the beginning is laugh and not wrath, which I've decided it is, so laugh, tell, laugh, tell, laugh, tell. I'm going to keep saying it over and over You're going to say it until it sounds like something? I don't know what to tell you. Because it, it's it got to be more. There's All more right. to it then. If the last island is called that, then there's more to it about being a joke, about being uh, some sort of narrative that is funny to the pirate, the last island. 
Um, in all the history, only one group of pirates is known to have landed there for sure, and it was the crew of the Pirate King. God, no. That's my new obsession now. And then Luffy, until we get there. You mean, until we get there. Is that where the One Piece is? Perhaps. <clears throat> okay, obsessed. We need to not move into that part too much, because now I'm obsessed. It sounds like it. Look, I think... If there's anything to be obsessed about in the series, it's the One Piece. It's making me crazy. Because then I start <laughs> to think about why would he choose that? How can it not be translated from Japanese over? Is he Does he like the name because it has the word laugh in it then? Like, is the English translation, does he like it in two sounds? Is there a reason he likes it in two sounds? So then I I start to think, like, yeah, okay. I'm digging into this. I'll get there. All right. This is when you know something is going on, right? When you, you already know that the numbers mean something. When the mysterious sea otter, Mr. 13, comes and drops a package, which happens to be a bomb. And let's just put it out. If you've got to be bombed by something, it might as well be the cutest little creature holding his little clamshells out in front of him. On a flying vulture? Yes. The mysterious vulture, Miss Friday. Rock it out, Miss Friday. I love that this pair of assassin spies... Or an otter and a vulture. Yeah, I could not have been happier. When they came down, I was like, oh, hell yeah. If you've got to be murdered, it should definitely be by one of the most adorable little otters in the world with little sea clammy shells on its hand. Hells to the eye. <laughs> but it's also where you suddenly know, like, oh, okay, these numbers and these names mean something. Because if they didn't, you wouldn't have something else coming out in a numbered thing. Um, and a named thing, another date and another number. And then I guess we are, do we have anything else to talk about in this first section with my laboon? The furthering, people have confirmed that it's not done yet, the furthering of the diary of Kobe Meppo. Kobe and Hell Meppo doing their best to learn how to be Marines, being trained at Marine HQ, uh, trying to get strong. Not just uh, that, but Hell Meppo's, in this section, first we see Hell Meppo make the choice to to yell at and jump off the stolen little craft mm -hmm. into the water to come back. Beginning is Kobe and Helmeppo's Chronicles of Toil, Volume 28, Day After Day, Train, Train, Train. And mm -hmm. they're both covered in lumps all over their skulls and owies all over their body. And he's big at this point. And I was like, how did he grow so much? How much time has passed? So then I was wondering, like, if the time that's taking place inside of where we are right now is running at a different speed than the time that's taking place outside because how did Kobe get so big and have to go through so much training and so much kowtowing and meanwhile we've barely been in we're still just just left Whiskey Island or whatever we're so, just on that yeah it's only been like a, a month or so one of the other theories I have read is that this cuts ahead of time. Like, this is happening faster than what we're seeing. And, like, okay. this backstory is ending months from now because Kobe is just not intersecting with the story for that time. I've read a lot so of So they're things. allowing us to see into the future. So that we actually then... get the full scope of his story, yeah. That's the one I okay. like best. People are wanting your opinion on the Marine who fell asleep and let Morgan escape and is handling a lot of their training garp. So I kept trying to say to myself, is this like a sensei thing where they're taking most of the um, hit for the person who, who really should be taking the hit for this? Because both of them are having to atone so hard and yet and he's the one that's having to train them. Helmepo, I just feel bad for, like he's being shoved in the same thing. But you kind of have to wonder whether or not because Helmepo is like, dude, I was kidnapped by somebody like 90 times stronger than me. I've done no um, training and he just put an axe to my head. What do you want from Kobe actually got orders? Choice. What you thought I was going to do here. And then he's there like, that's a good point. So go do all these chores, chore boy. And he's like, sweet, that's fantastic. So we are about to head on to Whiskey Peak now. Yes. Okay. So just a reminder, if anyone wants to continue to see this, like and subscribe. Hit the button so you get all the subscription things because then we can keep on rocking on. Hell yeah. Awesome. Thank you for doing my like and subscribe plug. But I also just want to say, look, 
You're gonna fall in love with me one day, chat, uh, YouTube. I know, we're, we're, we've we just met. She has a magnetic <laughs> personality. I know she's a star of the show for now. Look, we're gonna be best friends, chat. I know it's gonna happen. Give me some time, but I know who's bringing the crowds right now. I'm under no self-deception to think otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, if Usopp can be loved, certainly you can. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> oh, what a comparison <laughs> all right <laughs> i wasn't gonna bring this onto the onto the youtube video but th that kind of makes it worth it that's kind of funny okay so um uh, as we're moving on we get to see right away uh that things are going to be different because immediately we go into like a snowstorm love that choice we open the, the page and all okay. of a sudden, yeah, as soon as you change pages and you go from the last chapter into chapter 106, boom, snow. And you're like, wait, wait a minute, what the hell? Like, we just <laughs> left a tropical beach. How did they get into the snow? As the ship sails on, the season turns to freezing winter and sometimes spring. And you're like, ah, uh, I'm going to love this. Uh, we definitely have gone into a new place now. We're not in Kansas anymore. I love this idea that right away Oda is like, what if, uh, what if seasons in a day? And then you're like, yeah, that would really help to explain how weird it is here and how much you have to rely on these uh, logs. Um, also, just as a side note, I really love that when we see Usopp, who, by the way, mm -hmm. is a great artist. I mean, his, his snow piece is definitely better than the one that... Um, Luffy makes. I, love I that really lose up a ton of talents, just not ones yeah. that always are relevant. Okay, so it's interesting because you and I had a little talk about this before, mm -hmm. and it feels like Usopp is the most human mm -hmm. of all of them. He is the one that I would call, like when you're reading Indigenous First Peoples stories, the raven and the coyote are often the human characters in stories. And so the things that they do are kind of the antics of humans. And I feel like Usopp is, <laughs> feels weird when we're talking about them all being human, but I feel like Usopp is the one that's the most human. And so I thought it was really cool that they showed this human moment of him sculpting and this beautiful piece he made. The things that are going on in the ocean for me in this section aren't a huge thing to talk about. I do like how they made it clear that she has to keep her eyes on the prize. That the mm -hmm. minute she took, off, took her eyes off of the um, log pose, boom. It made sure that we understood how important the log pose was, how much we have to pay attention to it. Oh, although I do love the idea that Zoro sleeps through the entire thing. And as everybody is freaking out and, and absolutely decimating themselves to stay safe, Zoro then just wakes up and is like, hey, where are we and what's going on? That's fantastic, though, because it's a great contrast to what happens in the next section where Zoro gets to be uh, all zoro -y. Yep, yep. I was hoping you'd bring that up if you were going to bring up that he was sleeping during the snowstorm. Yeah, so I adore that they have it be like all these um, all these things are happening. They're all trying to keep themselves alive. They're struggling their ass off. And uh, it takes all of them to keep the ship afloat and to keep on track. And Zoro is like, I'm just going to have a little, little snooze here. And then boom, absolute reversal when we go into the next phase and everybody else is sleeping. And Zoro is like, yeah, I'll take care of this. I got it. Not a problem. An observation I've heard that I really like about that is Zoro makes it clear he sleeps when he feels safe and he knows his crew can handle a disaster. He doesn't know they can handle trickery and chicanery. Yeah, and that's exactly what it felt like. First leg of our journey, we go to a island of giant cactuses. Yeah, just big old cactuses. Nothing else. Nothing to them. Moving they on. jump off the boat. Seems weird. Seems like a weird way to do it. You know what? By the way, uh, could we get like a little rowboat? I would like it if my if my crew could have a little rowboat to get themselves to shore. It would feel nice. It's a nice yeah. way to get places. Not have to just uh, dock constantly. They can have some sort of mini Mary to get them to the shore. Yeah, wouldn't that be a nice thing? I'd really love to see that for them. So that's not a prediction. That's a hope. I hope they get a freaking rowboat. This cactus island is fascinating i keep asking like i know that i can't overthink it but i'm like why did you choose cactuses as Wait, the first thing chat it's been revealed what the cactus's deal is right like i thought it had by this point so you must have missed it because it actually got revealed that the cactuses are just big round hills covered in tombstones okay 
So when I read that and he said, I would rather eight new tombstones and he was looking at that, I mistook the area that he was pointing to rather than thinking it is in the whole island. That makes oh, a lot more Oh, you thought he was just pointing to a graveyard. Yeah. You know what was really cool about this island? Like right away we find out that this system is going to be is it crocodile face? Crocodile is the warlord that we found out runs Baroque works in this arc. Right away, we come to the island and it's like, you're at the beginning of the islands. All the islands start here. It's a cool idea that it's cactuses, even though the entire thing is covered with um, graves, even though uh, given the way it's drawing, that means lots of them are sideways, which is whatever you do, you yeah. bury your dead the way you bury your dead. But it's interesting because the island doesn't have enough food. The island doesn't have enough resources to survive. The river cuts right through the section of the island, which is what I thought, which would make it not even have a lot of fresh water, which makes it so that at the beginning of the islands, you're literally getting almost nothing. You're not going to see the interesting flora and fauna. You're not, it's not deeply rich. And yet there's a ton hidden in this, just like a real desert. Like you go out mm -hmm. into the desert and there's sand and shrub and there's not really, it feels like anything. And then if you dig down a little bit or a little rain happens, things bloom. You find out that there's rabbits hiding in burrows. There's all these different animals around. You're just not seeing them. So there's a richness of things to learn in here, but it appears to be just a barren landscape. And that's kind of what you do because suddenly you realize that these people, this is where you find out about how everybody is connected to this crocodile person and that the closer you get to zero, the more powerful you are. And when we got to number five, what was the gum gum that number five had? Uh, his devil was fruit devil was, fruit? I think, called the bomb bomb fruit. He can turn yeah. any part of his body into an explosive. Yeah, and... Ugh, not! Yeah? Like he, used, he used boogers multiple times, and, he, yeah. and I was eating at the time. What? Dis okay, you tell me. You need to bomb someone. You don't want to punch them. You need something that's a part of your body that can be thrown at them. What are you picking? I want him to have mucus and spit. I also love that he went with the trope right away. We get to the first place and it's that um, lull you into a feeling of safety. Have a celebration. Oh, we're so glad to see you. Feed you, take care of you, fatten you up, and then use you. So I, I loved that that was the very first island. I thought yeah. that was a fantastic way to do that. Immediate trap from a town that pretends to love pirates. Absolutely sets precedent for everything that's going to take place from now on. And plus, we know the system that we're working with. And you're wondering, like, okay, who else are we going to meet along the way? And how close to zero are we going to get? How fast are we going to get there? And what does the zero mean? I'm glad that his hair had something in, is it Igarapoi? Uh, Igaram is how I've heard it pronounced in the anime. I'm glad that we had an explanation for his crazy ass hair. He reminded me of those things in the rolling game. Igram. What's okay. Igram. What's the rolling game? Uh, Katamari Damacy? Yeah. He reminded me of Katamari <laughs> Damacy when you roll about and you collect things. He reminded me of one of the princes with his crazy, crazy it hair. He does kind of have Katamari Damacy cousin energy. I'm not sure if he's dead. It says he's dead at the end of this. Mm -hmm. And then when you see the boat blown up and the decoys are floating there, you're like, oh, the, that's so that we know that it was him and that he died. Well, then why didn't they just show his body? So, yeah, no. You're suspicious about his death. No, I say no. I say no. I say foul play. Foul Sorry. play. This man's alive. This man is a living thing and there's going to be more to it. Let's just take a moment here. Okay. Let's have a standing ovation for uh -huh. Zorro. Uh, like having this fight scene of Zoro, um, and Zoro finding steals out the, the arc again, oh, yeah. Once again, Zoro somehow knows everything and is alive. So everyone else is hunted down, but somehow Zoro managed to live. A true swordsman never drinks himself into a stupor. And then he said, "And a den of bounty hunters can be a dangerous place. You trick pirates into celebrating, blah blah blah." He says, "I'll take you on, broke works." And then they're all like, oh. and he knew they exist long ago when I was in your line of work, an organization tried to recruit me and naturally turned you down. They already know, he already knows so much about them. Mm -hmm. Somehow he doesn't get murdered. And you're like, 
How is that possible? Oh, here's the panel I missed. Tombstones to adore the cactuses. One more tombstone to adore. I needed that. I had a moron moment and missed a panel because I was so excited about Zoro revealing all the crap and we got so hung no, up on no, Zoro. This, it's so awesome. fucking badass for Zoro to just be like, yeah, yeah. Uh, you knocked out my crew. Sure. Um, y'all ready to be corpses? That was the problem. I think the whole problem is while well, Zoro was Zoroing, I'm like, it's <laughs> and he's Zoroing and I can't focus on anyone else because he's too awesome right now. And everyone else is saying really important plot points. And I'm like, shut up. You're getting in the way of Zoro doing his cool crap. <laughs> he knows everything about Baroque works. Yep. Um, you're a bunch of Baroque works, a bunch of crooks who's loyally obey him. He knows everything. And of course, the identity of the boss and his whereabouts are a mystery to everyone. Oh, <laughs> was that a secret? My God, Zoro. Why don't you just high five yourself? Because damn. <laughs> um, and then they all go after him and he literally decimates all of these people who are coming after him, like just why, why are you going after Zoro when he's so cool? What? But the thing that made this even cooler mm -hmm. was then once again, it hypes up my main man Hawkeye because if Zoro knows all these things, if they tried to recruit him, if he could have been in this area with them already, then it's pretty crazy to think about how easily Hawkeye beat him. Oh yeah. It's, it puts Hawkeye at another level that he disarmed Zoro this easy when Zoro is this far above your average bounty hunter. And then I started to question what number would a Zoro have been? And Zoro, according to what we know about him, hasn't even eaten a devil fruit. Yep, he has not. And might I just say, yet. Yet? You think uh, Zoro might get a devil fruit one day? Uh, I just want him to get a devil fruit one day. <laughs> I don't know if this is a prediction so much as a mm. wish. There's actually a lot of people who are Zoro fans who hope that he never does because they want Zoro to be able to be this here, cool without here. a devil fruit forever. Yeah. I, and I absolutely can see that as well. But there's something, maybe he can just get a longevity devil fruit. So <laughs> we never have to some, worry about him going away. Some sort of devil fruit that can extend his lifespan. All the time I try not to think that Zoro is the coolest thing since sliced bread. And I'm always like, Damn, but he just is the coolest thing since sliced bread. Yeah, I love him taking out his sword and seeing like, all right, let's see what this sucker can do. And uh, yeah, it can do some stuff. I got to tell you, I'm going to really enjoy the arc around his sword. Because when he said, it's sliced through that stone mallet. What? And then he said, Katetsu 3 has a great edge, but a legendary sword should only cut when its master wants it to. This one's a problem, child. I was like, this sword? having a mind of its own that's delightful for me i am really hoping this sword gets us into some places that we otherwise would not have gotten into so i so looking forward to seeing where this sword takes us and i think that there's going to be uh some kind of a piece where this sword ends up forcing zero's hand I like that they called it Baroque works, by the way, because Baroque is such a period of a the classical pieces and looks, but Baroque is all about being layered um, and Ooh. over the top. And Baroque is all about being like um, the type of thing where um, everything is <sighs> gilded edges and, uh, secrets within secrets and layered hierarchy and so then you're i said to myself is it possible that we've got this alligator face who's one of the seven i love um, how face has no part of that guy's name and you cannot stop calling him crocodile face and then this time it's not even crocodile face it's alligator face don't don't get me wrong it's very luffy like that when someone's not a crewmate you don't bother saying their name <laughs> I've done this. I noticed I was listening back at one of our pieces to try to remember something that I had said. And I was like, did I say that? And then I looked and I noticed I've done it before. Um, no, I like <laughs> doing that. I'm fine with it. It's okay. It's canon. Um, so Crocodile Head, I'm wondering if it's layered within layered. Like when we get up to zero, then you're like, that can't be the end. Well, is he number seven then? And then we have to go through all of the other uh ones and they have more. Strength? I, I think don't know. Vivi did say that Mr. Zero is Crocodile. I'm pretty sure that Vivi said no, that. No, I mean, but he's one of the mm. seven warlords, right? Ah. Does, is he number seven? 
or are they in any particular order? That's the thing that I started to wonder because if you're mm -hmm. counting backwards for strength to get up to crocodile head, then are we also counting backwards for strength in the numbers of the of our pirate okay. warlords? So then I started to think that, okay, then he might be number seven and we're on this island and he's so powerful for this island, but he, he's not the big, big. Because Baroque is this layered system. So I'm like, you're not going to be meeting the biggest big. I mean, we did get to see Hawkeye on the other hand, but you're not going to be meeting the biggest bigs right away. So it makes you think that we're seeing, um, if this was a kimono, we're seeing the outside of the kimono. And we still have all these other layers of the story. So now, after Zoro's been Zoro, there's a contentious point here. There's a, a greatly I debated hate... and disliked part right after. Okay, does everyone hate this as much as me? I hate that Luffy immediately expected everyone the hates worst. It. Everyone hates out of... it. And I, and I kept trying to, like, I read that chapter when he first fights him and when he first gets angry. I reread it three times. It feels because out of character for Luffy. It doesn't feel right. Uh, it is complained about at length by a lot of people. The best explanation I've heard, it is the best explanation I've heard that an editor told Oda to have them fight somehow. It, it wasn't only that it was outside the character because traditionally when Luffy goes on one of his Luffy moments and overreacts and jumps into something without thinking, which is, you know, a fair bit, that when he's talked to they can bring him down quickly and this like he just wouldn't hear anything and this is a member of his team he has faith in his team in a way that he doesn't have faith in other people and it seemed really not only out of character but it seemed to break a bit of trust with the straw hats and i just thought mm -hmm. that's a mistake I've heard people say that, well, they've only been traveling together like a month, so this is just the uncertainties. I don't know. That doesn't feel right with Luffy being someone who's like, I don't need to know if this guy's evil or not. He made you cry. Tell me who to beat the fuck up, Nami. I'm going to do it. Like, it feels against character and in a, an uncomfortable way. I don't like it. Uh, I also just want to put it out there that Karu the Ultra Spot Bill, that name basically means uh, Ducky. So she named her <laughs> big, powerful birdie Ducky. And her supersonic I, duck is named Ducky. Yeah. And I'm here for that all day long. So we meet Mr. Five and Valentine in here. They get their asses literally kicked before that fight. So then I'm sitting there and going, um, they were easily able, just as a, by the way, and it was just as like a side note. They kind of beat the crap on them as a side note because they got in the way of their fight. Yeah. Before Nami knocks them out. And I was like, whoa, we have really leveled up in the how powerful we already are. Has there been some change since they've come across? I, because I think it really just is that they were the biggest fish in the East Blue. Like, I, and, and to the rest of the world, th these dudes are a big deal. Like, they're ready for the Grand Line. But they're not only ready for the Grand Line. Like, when you're beating up number five and Valentine that's beyond ready for the grand line. It is also the thing that made me think that there may be some order to the warlords mm -hmm. because if they're kicking number five in this area, there's going to have to be way bigger fish than them because we've already saw that Hawkeye is kicking ass, right? Makes me feel like we're not seeing one of the stronger groups. I think that's a, so. a, a fair assessment from what you have as information that it seems like Crocodile wouldn't be at Mihawk's level as a warlord. Excuse me, crocodile face. I'm not going to. You can do that all you want. I'm I'm <laughs> going to put some respect on Sir Crocodile's name. <laughs> um, that man has a knighthood, uh, apparently. He goes by Sir Crocodile. Who knighted him? All right. Anyways, <laughs> uh, I was actually a little sad not to see Mr. Five and Miss Valentine a little more because He's bringing the aesthetic to the table. Like that long jacket with the five down on both of the sides. Mr. Five has drip. There was something about him that felt that kind of vibe of like end of the world cool, matrix cool. I like that the Baroque workers have been inside of the kingdom of Alabasta, pulling it down from the inside. Because it makes sense that they would be trying to take over something that isn't just a remote giant cactus looking cemetery place and that they'd be looking for something that was more long term. I've got to stop my people before they throw themselves into the Baroque Works clutches. This princess, 
I'm still kind of iffy on this decision that she just drops his name. That's not an accident. She keeps talking about what an accident it is. But you know that she damn well knows that as long as she forces them to be in it too, then they're going to have to help her out at a different level. I, I do think Oda does just like the kind of gag, but whether or not it's true, I'm going to choose to believe she did it on purpose because it's more fun that way. She 100% did. In my world, All right. in my world, it's too late. It's done. Okay, so this is why I think that dude, that dude who sings is, God, you got to love him in drag. His drag is uh, stunning. But the eternal pose remembers one location forever, no matter where you go, it'll always find the same point on the island. That is going to mean something later on. Uh, I, I love the eternal pose, especially because Oda introduces this reason to island hop island to island and never venture and just like perfectly justify an adventure series and then immediately is like here's a way around it exactly it, that was what really I, love. it's what i talked about in the com belt that he doesn't want to have simple cheap answers he wants to have simple answers to why there's a way you should do it but have it be a world where things don't need to go that way where people have lived in this world and come up with solutions 100 percent Really interesting that in one of these panels in the very beginning of 113, he has the moon down low on the horizon and behind these two church steeples. And it actually looks like a face. Um, mm. And it looks like the moon is looking down on things and is alarmed by what it's seeing as it's staring at the boat. It's a really interesting panel. And then you're like, uh, hmm, that's an interesting panel. So then he grabs his sleeping crew drags them out onto the boat. Thankfully, the duck is already there because Ducky is smart, smart duck. And that's when we see the dummies floating in the water and we meet one of the coolest cats in the history of cool cats. Oh, I forgot that this was now. Yeah. And it's Miss, Miss All, Sunday. All Sunday. And I love that. Yeah. She is one of the coolest cats. Now, we could have done an entire thing just on her. Miss All Sunday. <laughs> we could have had a two-hour conversation about Miss All Sunday. The yeah. lady in a, in a cowboy hat. Hey, don't just Miss Sunday. Miss All Sunday's got her stuff going on. Um, right. She is Baroque Works Vice President and Supreme Commander. Yep. That's a, that's a big um to put out in the world. No, she got, she got a big title. Yeah. That's a big, big level to put out into the world and show up on the deck just right away. So I love the idea that she gives them a hint on what they should do, tells her, I knew who you were and I let you follow me to the princess. And then she says, I'm curious, you seem so earnest, I just had to help you. A princess declaring war on Baroque works to save her country, how pathetic. And then somehow starts to give them tips on what they can do to survive and then you're like okay which direction is this going can we trust her tips or can we not trust her tips what is her fruit do we know her uh, fruit? do you know no no idea okay well but she was able to flip them off the balcony like so easy so she was easy. able to pull his hat up yep and uh, I didn't see I didn't see air movements in his drawing. There was no air movements. So you that is a good observation. So oh, if you had to guess what this devil fruit does, you're, you're, I don't think there's any chance you could be right. But people want your guess. Should that be in a prediction area then? Right yeah, now, yeah, I minute? think we're ready to move into prediction. Let's start with that. Let's start with predict for me. What do you think, Miss All Sunday's devil fruit is? I don't think there's a chance you get it right. Well, I love that I don't get it right. I first of all, can we give a nod to her turtle? Bunchy. She is a turtle? Yeah. I she says, that. let's let's go, Bunchy. And I forgot about the turtle named Bunchy. <laughs> sails off into the water on her turtle. And you okay. know me. The minute I met that turtle, I was like, she's now my favorite. <laughs> Every um, one piece animal is immediately your friend. She's not using any air, but she's managing to put things down slowly. She is had people move away from her. I, so I will say the visible element is being obfuscated for mystery. There is a visible element. So there is a visible element in here. Yeah. Um, but he is intentionally making it so that we can't see it. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it's mind control because generally when there's mind control, you know, plus she can control not only people, but she can control items. I think this might be the devil fruit I want. Um, 
I think you will when you find out what it is for sure. I think this is the one that's going to top the gum gum. Because, spoiler alert, uh, for the Devil Fruit tier list, I don't think it's changing much because I don't think Kilo Kilo Fruit or the Bomb Bomb Fruit are topping gum gum, huh? No, I think hers is going to be the one that I want, just from what I've seen so far. Almost feels like she has ghosts, minions working for her, pushing people over. So in order to be really, really um, ridiculous, I'm going to go uh -huh. out on huge limbs and say that she has. You're going out on it. huge limbs to guess the fruit of Miss Alzande. Got it. Some sort of control over the dead. And she oh, can use she can use ghosts to move things around and do her bidding. More predictions. We had predicted that Laboon's crew might be someone that you know, and you think they might be alive. Yeah, I think... See, because I think a lot of people would say, like, it was obviously the King of the Pirates, right? Who mm -hmm. Laboon... I mean, it makes the most sense. If you're looking at timeline and how long he's been there yeah. and that kind of crap, then... So I think it could be the King of the Pirates who was Laboon's crew, but I think some of the crew could still be alive and that the people inside of the crew, that one of them could have been, um, that one of them could have been like crap geezer could have, could have traveled with him. And then when he was killed, um, they all didn't come back, but now they're going to go through and, and maybe, maybe we'll get to see crap geezer again or something, all but right. then it would be, but I, my prediction right. for now is I'm just going to put out there. It could be a crap crap geezer pirate king moment wouldn't be unheard of now the next thing i wanted you to predict is what kind of person do you want to join the crew next they do need a doctor obviously he made a very good point when he said like yeah we're we need a doctor do you want to join us so i'm hoping that the next person they get is going to be somebody with medical especially since not not everybody is a gum gum weirdo boy who likes to run into disasters and so i kind of hope the next person is going to be somebody with medical ability if you had to commit is that what you'd pick though i would 100 percent pick a medical person there you go i think that's good enough i don't think we have big shakeups to our devil fruit tier list or to our favorite characters right Oh, uh, Devil Fruit now is whatever the hell all Miss All Sunday has. Without knowing what it is, what you're it committing. Is. You're, I don't okay. know what it is, and this I This pedal goes it. up, we've committed, that's your preferred Devil Fruit before we know it. And then today, my my person at the top of the list is Miss All Sunday. That's Miss All Sunday is dethroned Mihawk. Just today. Mihawk is overall number one, unshakable. Okay. okay. Um, just it just in today's read, it's Miss All Sunday, okay. then it's Zoro, then it's so this is the stars Nami of this today, section, and then Luffy because Luffy tried to punch Zoro, so he's had to slide down in the pulse. Luffy needs to be held back and have a little lesson. He's got a timeout in the he's corner. He's gonna have a timeout in yeah. the number five position to think, or four, I don't remember <laughs> to think it over. Now, it's the last day. There's one last game I want to play with you, and I'm going to do this again when we reach my second favorite character. Okay. But in today's section, we, for the first time, have talked about my third favorite character. We only met them in this area. This is the first time you and me have talked about them at the very least. One thing that, like in spoiler alerts, you said to me, I won't like them. Uh, no, my number two, you won't like. My number three, I'm not sure what your opinion will be. Well, it's definitely not I'll Miss All Sunday then, because you know how I feel about her. So I think your number three in that case is going to be, it's not going to be the dude who was blown up because, but he does come back. Yeah. I'm going to tell you blown it's not up. that. It's not him. I'm just going to tell you. No? It's, it's not okay. spiral hair, man. Well, then in that case, it's, I'm going to say the princess. The princess? Princess Vivi. High on my tier list. Big fan. Love her to bits. No, sorry. It's Garp. Darn you. It's What? Garp. Garp is my third favorite character. Of all time? Of all of the series. Well, you just gave me information that I can play with. Uh, that I like Garp. I think I think Garp is great. No, Garp continues. Now I'm going to go back and read Garp again. I mean, like he's just a guy from a cover story, as far as you're aware. Uh, no, yeah, welcome, I think... Welcome to my scrutiny, Garp. <laughs> And then I will, I'll just say it. The guess, I don't need to do a guessing game for this one. Number five is, uh, is, is, uh, Miss All Sunday. That's, that's my number five character. Is number five Miss All Sunday? Yeah, no, that's my fifth favorite. So we do meet my third and my fifth in this section. Number one's Luffy. And uh, when we hit two and four, I'll, I'll make you do a little guessing game. 
Okay, I love me some Miss All Sunday, and I think she's going to be up there with my man, Mihawk. I got terrible news. It's another short section. I mean, the good news is for you, Chad, it means we'll be doing this again sooner. We might be able to do it next week again. It's only 15 chapters. Little Garden is over at chapter 129. Yeah, we're just going to do Little Garden because I really think we're not going to dive into Little Garden enough if we do the island after as well. I love what you've done with Laboon. Thank um, you. I, I don't love that I have to see in color his owies. <laughs> 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 that makes me really sad because that makes it even that much worse. Well, Where... I've decided Laboon is one of my BFFs. I would ride Ducky and the Turtle over with my dog friend, and then we would hang out with Laboon and Cow. I think someone wanted to see you do a tier list of the animals in One Piece. I think we gotta wait till you're caught up, and we'll do a proper like tier list video of your favorite animals of One Piece. I disagree. We should do a tier list of of the animals next time because there's so many and choosing the animals for me is going to be way there harder. there are some animals that we need to be i think we were talking about taking a break to do more discussion content and i think doing like a full four hour stream where both halves of it are different one piece discussions every time there's like a good stopping point is honestly a good idea with how much we want to talk about it the end of this saga the end of the saga about crocodile is the point that I think we stop and we have a discussion stream where we don't advance in the story at all. We just talk. Yeah. And I think we should, we'll tier list the island at that point. We'll tier list our favorite animals. Okay, so yeah, I was thinking it'd be good to have to talk about what's taking place now. And I can't mm -hmm. go back and actually talk about what happened before. And I would like to talk about it as a whole with you. Uh, so yeah. yeah, this saga we're going to complete before we do like a big talk stream where we just discuss, go over things. And we will do the animal tier list then because I think we'll have enough animals. All right. 100%. All right. I'm already trying to think about wh what order I would put the animals <laughs> in that I've met. And it's already breaking my heart. <laughs> I am thrilled. Thank you so much for doing this. Thank you all so much for being here. I am having a blast. I love having all of you. This is so much fun. I'm so excited to go through the rest of the series. Is there any words you want to go off on? Yeah, I just want to say thanks for sticking with it and uh, forcing me to read One Piece. It took a long time, <laughs> but in the end, just like Oda would say, timing is everything. And now is when it was meant to happen. Aw. And for everybody else, it's been lovely dropping to you. Chat has made it clear that I need to cut that bit from the YouTube video to avoid what the comment section will look like. Oh my god. <laughs> Opening up foot talk. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Chad, for making this one very, very easy to know. Hmm. Observations aside, that one doesn't make it actually. <laughs>